as we move through this journey, there's things that we're supposed to be accomplishing. The first one is accepting the real reality of the loss. The next one is experience the pain of the grief. That's all this difficult part. Um, and then we, we begin to put our lives together as we adjust to a world in which the deceased is missing. And that's the part where family comes in because the world now, your family now, doesn't include that person. So part of the adjustment is the restructuring of how the family is functioning together as a unit. So we have a relationship with ourselves, but then we have a relationship called family. We have a relationship called couple. All of those things have to reorganize themselves, and that's what's happening. That, that's a, a, a goal of this, of this journey. And then the final goal is um, finding an enduring connection with the deceased while at the same time investing in a new life. Now, this is a little bit different than um, I was talking with some of the ladies yesterday that I'm not quite as conventional as most therapists. A lot of therapists feel that you need to have closure. How many hate that word? Yeah, well, what we need to have is inclusion, and what we need to have is a adaptation to the relationship now that it has it has changed its form. That's tough. One of my favorite phrases in the literature that I agree with is that we need to figure out how to take this loss and this death become a background that our life is built on. Unhealthy is when it's the foreground. Okay, and there's a, there, there's a subtle difference, but the difference experientially is phenomenal. The difference is what puts it up here, if you can have it become the background. So Gary and Denise are a great example of where this traumatic thing has happened, and they've moved it into a background. <laughs>